Hello, I'm John Glassy. I'm the old guy that teaches in the school counseling program. Uh, and I've been asked to talk to you about the history of the program. And no, it's not true. I wasn't here when Peabody Hall was built or even the addition. But I, I was here, I have been here since 1973. And uh, to provide some context, it was a very different time in many ways. It's before iPads and iPhones and cell phones in general. Uh, it's before Facebook and even before MySpace. And even before Bill Gates and uh, Steve Jobs at least unleashed these microcomputers on them. Uh, in 1973, in the days of the, earth, of the program that I recall, we used typewriters and we used uh, a substance called whiteout to correct our mistakes. And IBM Selectric typewriters with their self-correcting uh, functions, they were the uh, ultimate office machines that we had. If we use computers, those computers were housed in a separate building and they took up a whole room or two. And uh, we punched our data for those computers on IBM punch cards that we carried around in large boxes that we dreaded dropping on the ground because it would take us forever to reposition uh, all the cards. Now, counseling programs were different also in those days. In most states, uh, in order to be a school counselor, you had to hold a teaching certificate or teaching license before you could be trained as a school counselor. And uh, still in a few states today, that's currently the case. Uh, in North Carolina at that time, if you didn't hold a teaching license, you had to do an internship in the schools in which you learned how schools function and also learned the role of the teacher. The typical counseling program in those days uh, involved about 30 to 36 semester hours of credit and it covered two academic semesters. In other words, you entered in August and you finished in, in May. Uh, in many programs, you had your practicum or practical experience in university-based clinics. In our program, however, we always did our work out in the schools. Uh, in the case of being placed in the schools, uh, typically you went out there about a month after school started, uh, and then you finished there early, in early May, which is about a month before the public schools actually ended. So you followed the university calendar rather than the public school calendar, and that certainly had some disadvantages because you never really saw how the council began and ended the year. Now over the years, the programs uh, tended to expand, and they expanded for a couple of reasons. One was based on the realization that to meet the uh, needs of a diverse, increasingly diverse student population, the counselors needed a different set of skills and more skills. A second important factor was also that uh, accreditation requirements uh, changed over time and then became uh, more uh, comprehensive. So what happened to our program is it moved first to a 45 semester hour, uh, then to a 54 semester hour, and ultimately to the 60 semester hour program that we now have. And along the way, of course, the number of days that you spent out in your uh, practicum or internship experience uh, per week expanded from two days a week to what we have now, which is three days a week, and also the duration increased. Our students now uh, begin their uh, field experience uh, about a week before the public schools start and then they finish it when the public schools end. So that as an uh, intern you see the, what the counselor does throughout the entire school year rather than th in the academic school year uh, of the university which was the case when we first started. Now over time our training model also changed and into what we now believe is a fairly unique and effective uh, approach. Uh, as you may know, it involves a strengths-based emphasis, which is virtually uh, unheard of in most counseling programs. And this involves focusing on promoting uh, in students their uh, skills, their assets, their strengths, and, uh, and rather than focusing primarily on reducing deficits and problems. It also involves promoting strengths-enhancing environments for students. But I'll let Dr. Rakos and also uh, our website tell you more about that. I want to talk more about the length of the program, which is probably the most unusual aspect uh, of it, and the one about which we get the most questions. Questions such as, can you really train a, a competent school counselor in 14 months when virtually every other program does it in two full years of study? Like anything else, there are advantages and disadvantages uh, to a 14-month program as opposed to a two-year program. First of all, our 14-month uh, program does include two semesters and two, uh, two semesters and two full summer sessions of study. So in, sen in a sense, then, it's the, actually the equivalent of a four-semester, two-year program. 
But before we get to the, the, the disadvantages, and let me want to say one other thing. One of the advantages of that, of course, is that in a 14-month program, you're only out of the academic job market a single year rather than two years as you would be in a two-year program. Now, before we get to the disadvantages, uh, let me tell you how we came up with the idea of a 14-month program. I'd like to be able to tell you that we did a lot of research on this in terms of what was the uh, optimal way to train counselors and what was the optimal time period in which to train them. Um, but that would really not be true if I, if I tried to set, tell you that. The reality uh, was that it was a case of necessity being the mother of invention. And by that, what I mean is we've always been a small faculty. And at the time, we were running both a doctoral program in counseling psychology and a master's, and the master's program. And in order to fit in all the courses, we found that you had to basically make full use of the summer sessions. And in so doing, we discovered that that worked pretty well. So in a sense, we kind of stumbled on the 14-month duration because we had to do it that way in order to be able to teach all the required courses that we needed. Now, as far as the disadvantages are concerned, this type of program is not ideal for all students. For example, it does not accommodate part-time study. We were just not equipped to uh, to, to work with students who don't only study on a part-time basis. It's full-time study only. And the pace of the program uh, requires that students will be very organized and be able to manage their time effectively. But of course, that's exactly what school counselors do. So in one sense, the, the duration of the program is a disadvantage, but in another sense, it represents a reality and a preview of what the school counselor's work environment is. Okay, so can you prepare a skilled counselor, school counselor in only 14 months rather than the two years that are done in most programs? The answer to that, as far as we're concerned, is definitely yes. And it's based on the data that we collect. Uh, let me tell you about the kinds of data we collect. First of all, we survey our, our, our first-year graduates and their employees, uh, their employers, rather, uh, after they leave school. So in the first year, we ask the graduates you know, how satisfied they are with the program, how well it's equipped them to uh, uh, perform as a school counselor. And we also ask their employers. And both employers and the graduates rate the program very highly. The other kind of data that we collect uh, include uh, Counselor of the Year awards, National Award recognition, and, and that sort of thing. And one of our graduates, of course, was recently named National School Counselor of the Year. Again, all this information about uh, awards that our students have received and, and, and licensing and certification is available on our website. Well, that's about it. If the program sounds like it might fit your needs, please peruse our website for more information and submit your application. And thank you for watching.